with John Trudell. John just uh, put out a new a new CD. We'll uh, talk a little bit about that. In fact, that's a good place to start. This just was released, what, the 8th, wasn't it? Um, yeah. It was? I mean, it's internet release. Oh, internet release. I see. Yeah, I'm, yeah, we don't really have a distribution, but it's all through the internet release. But the 8th. Mm -hmm. All right. Because we called up uh, uh, a couple places trying to find it, and, uh, and that they didn't have that, so that, that would explain why. Right? Yeah, no, yeah. At this point, it's all just internet because we just make these things and put them out the best we can. There's, mm -hmm. I don't really have a record company that's really a record company. Right. So it, I think it's Mother's World Media is the website to go to to right. get it, right? Or you can go to my website or whatever. But anyway, it's, on, it's an internet release. Right. Crazier so, than hell. So yeah. it's johntrudell.com. And also that Mother's World Media also has an awful lot of video of uh, that you've had interviews. One was, I think, was a, a PBS station. And, and uh, I think the, the one on, I think it was uh, your website, had video of you speaking at the World Social Forum. Was that just this last one in Detroit? J June. June, yes. Yeah. In Detroit. Yeah. All right. What was your experience there? <laughs> My experience was I went and stayed out of everything and just went and did what I went did there what to you do. Did. Right. Because I know there was and, like. Well, no, I mean, I appreciate all that getting together and all this and that. But, but in the end, to me, is I just went there to do what I went to do mm -hmm. because whatever that social forum networking is, it's, I mean, it serves its time and its place, but it's not really what I do. Is that what you do? Yeah. Well, what is it that you do then? I don't know, but that's not that's it. <laughs> <laughs> what you do is crazier than hell. Huh? That's right. Yeah, it is sometimes. So that, that's the name of the new CD, it was Crazier Than Hell. Crazier Than Hell. Than hell. Right. Yeah. And is there any, any particular uh, theme then for this, or are you just, just a compilation of music that you've written since your last CD? Or Well, no, I mean, there's always some kind of a theme. I'm not really sure I can articulate it, but there's always some kind of a theme. But this one, Crazier Than Hell, the title song, it's really a love song, right? But, but, and, but you take it, in, take, it out of a, take it into a larger context. What's going on is, something's crazier than hell. Mm -hmm. Either I am or whatever reality is doing, but <laughs> something is, you know, so, mm -hmm. so I like the title. Well, you know, if you're watching any, any kind of news at all, it's definitely crazier than hell. I mean, with, with the, uh, the, the situation in our political world, uh, I know that uh, you, you've, uh, forget what, what uh, show it was or what uh, uh, the time that you were here, but you were talking a little bit about Obama and, and you were, weren't really having a whole lot of expectations from him. And it seems to me that uh, your thoughts were borne out. He really hasn't uh, performed as well as a lot of people have expected. Well, it depends on who the lot of people are. All right, I think yeah. he's, he's performed well for the people who... He's performed well... For, for the people who put him in there to protect their interest, mm -hmm. you know, and and he's been very effective at protecting the interest, basically, of the industrial elite, you know, and and that's just obvious. Mm -hmm. But that's why he was put there. The selection stuff doesn't count. Yeah, you know, that reminds me of of, of, a, of a talk. I forget what it was, but you were talking about how you are part of the largest electorate. I don't know if you'd use the that word. Largest political party. Largest political party in yeah. the country. Because uh, the people that don't vote. Yeah, non-voters. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of folks, you know, some that watch this show and some people that, I'm, that I know, that uh, they really think that we should vote. And, and, and you know, the, the, the reason that you gave, you know, you might want to go into that a little bit, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, well, but, yeah, well, but I you, gave you the you reason do, now. The reason <laughs> the reasons that then. you have now, I mean, it made sense to me, because I always go ahead and vote. Got nothing to lose. Well, well, but, well, I don't know. But then you might you know, do that differently. I don't know if we have not. You know, if if, if voting is based on the concept of we got nothing to lose, well, see, I think that needs to really be looked at because uh -huh. then what's the point? If you got nothing to lose, then what's the point of even voting? You know, I mean, I mean, from that concept. But to me, what I'm talking about with with the voting is. Non-voters being the largest political party, because it's obvious that no matter how much people vote, the situation just continues to become favorable to the industrial ruling class, but not favorable to the citizens. It doesn't matter. That mm -hmm. seems to be just when you just look at how it kind of goes. And people, 
and I think the non-voters, they just under, I think in a way, right, they, they kind of look and they see that it's all, they make promises and they break them. They make promises, they break mm -hmm. them. They make promises, they break them. And so, when, so why even waste your energy? Why feed that, your energy to that lie? You know, it, mm -hmm. I mean, to me, all right? And, and then the thing, when you look at the people that do vote, who do, who pro profess to support the vote, who profess to say how important the vote is, see, all of these people that are all so enamored of the voting, well then, you know, maybe the vote would really mean something if they took their, their right to vote responsibly. Right? If they, uh, responsibly, I mean responsible, I don't mean, I mean responsibly. Responsibly in the sense that they use that so-called power of the vote to, to make the candidates, to make the representation make sense. See, but if you're just going to, but if, if the voters go out there and they say, well, here, I'll settle for the promise I want to hear. You know, just to give me a promise. You don't give me a plan. Don't give me anything coherent. Don't give me anything that makes sense. Just give me a promise and trash the, the other guy for being bad. That seems to be the criteria that the voters put out there. Mm -hmm. All right? That's what they'll accept. You know, yeah, you know, so, mm -hmm. so to me, to the overall structure, they're more dangerous than the non-voter. Because they're just, <laughs> they're, just being, they're, mm -hmm. they're just playing this game. Mm -hmm. You know, reality really is at issue here. You know, I mean, you know what's going on. It, it really is at issue. But I don't think that that the voters now. But now let me come in on this. All right. But I know that there are times when people who vote see when they really pay attention to issues that are serious. You know, that there are times the the political system exists. And you can't deny that it does. So I can understand voting when you're using voting as a tool that is just practical. You understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But to vote because you just believe that, you know, <laughs> just because you just believe that the promises that you're being told, just because see, there's just something wrong with the way people are participating in this voting system. And I think it basically comes down to is they don't, they, they don't ex they have no criteria, no standards for their candidates. You know, it strikes me that what you're saying is true. I never looked at it that way before. And, and by voting, you are validating the system as it stands rather than really trying to change it. You're not challenging it, not changing right. it. You're not exercising any power. You're just feeding your energy into the lie. Because, you know, people, let's say this Obama thing. But, you know, people want to see people are now becoming disenchanted and stuff. Well, you know. But if you look at when they were when when they were enchanted, yeah, they weren't having any they it. weren't having any coherent realistic dialogue about what it is they wanted. They were just accepting any promise. You know, see, because to me, when, if, if you're going to in a political system and you're going to have candidates and you're going to vote, well, then it seems to me you would expect your candidates to have a plan that makes sense, not a promise that I want to hear. These are two different realities. See, mm -hmm. and, and the people that voted for Obama, too many people that vote, whether, it doesn't matter whose side, they're voting for a promise they want to hear rather than a plan that makes sense. That, that's just almost, that's, you know, almost absolute the way the voting system works, especially on a national level. Maybe more regionally, locally, you know, it, it's not as nuts. There are actually people may <laughs> make more sense in what they're doing, but at the national level, when you look at it, you know, here, tell, tell me what I want to hear. You know, make mm -hmm. me a prom, make, tell me the promise I want to hear seems to be the political criteria for a candidate. Right, and you know, to my mind, it's always been more of a seduction than an election. They just blow in your ear and you go along with it. And then you cry about it down the road. Well, you should have known it all along. Yeah, I well, I don't know if it's a seduction. Because they're seducing. Uh, the, well, I, yeah, I, no, I understand exactly what you're saying, but uh, uh, yeah, it's a seduction. Right? It seems like it to me, anyway. <laughs> well, no, I, well, I don't. Even, no, it's not a seduction. It's like a, it, it, it's like a hypnotic reaction. Mm-hmm. See, seduction's got something going for it. It's got some fire. It's got something happening for it. All right. The way you do this, this is just really about hypnotically reacting to a program. That's true. You know, like punch card. 
You yeah, know, no, it's just, yeah, all right, we've been programmed that this is the way it is, and this is how we, you know, we've been programmed, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you look at the, the collective programming, because the, what do the voters do? You know, they're, their candidates demonize the other side instead of, instead of having coherent expression and ideas about what it is, how they would change things, they demonize the other side. It doesn't matter which side it is, they demonize, each side demonizes the other. And, and in emotional belief and anger and frustrations, these all become CNN. There, there's never any clear, coherent dialogue taking place. All emotional buttons being pushed. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that for the people that really embrace voting, see, they should they should behave themselves and take more responsibility for this thing. You know, and maybe it could actually kind of possibly work. You know, I don't know. If people took it seriously, you mean? Yeah, no, it's a response, yeah. Right, well, as you say, you know, there are times when you can vote. Like, you know, uh, if you're from California, there's a lot of people that think that this, this uh, uh, marijuana initiative down there is, is, is worth voting for, even though maybe the candidates aren't. So in initiatives might be... An, yeah, a, no, a, I'm saying, see, you know what, I'm not, I'm not just trashing the voting system, but right. I'm saying that there are times where nationally I don't think it's working. All right, I mean, it's really, the people are really benefiting from it. You know, they, they've had health care reform that they got passed and health care insurance went up. <laughs> Nothing's really changed except people pay more now that do pay it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and yeah, so it, it, I just think that people are going to vote and they're going to embrace it. I think it can, I think it can, I think in some ways it can work because the marijuana initiative is one of the examples of how people focusing and making a thing make sense. Mm -hmm. All right, and they got it changed. See, so I'm not saying that the local, that voting itself doesn't work, but it's like, to me it's almost like a tactic. Well, is it going to work this time or is it not? But to, to well, anyway, put belief systems in it from a romanticized, indoctrinated perception is, is careless. Mm -hmm. To look at it and understand how it can be practically used or not used, all right, then I think people are looking at it responsibly. Sure. I understand. And I, I think you made that very clear. And uh, I've videotaped a lot of your talks, put them on the air. And one theme that runs through a lot of them is uh, what makes us human in some ways is the use of our intelligence. And it seems to me that in this political sphere, people are not exercising their intelligence. I'm wondering if you'd kind of go into exactly, you know, I, I know what you mean by that, but I'm not too sure that and the person next to me I might take a, have another take on what you mean by exercising your intelligence. Use it. <laughs> it's simple. Mm -hmm. Exercise our intelligence. If we use it, that's exercising, mm -hmm. right? Use it to think. You know, I mean, yeah, because we can use our intelligence to believe without thinking, and that's exercising it, I guess, te theoretically sp or technically speaking. But we should use our intelligence to think. You know, I mean, It's like they're, philosophically, it's like, I don't know what this gener this century has that's really about philosophically, <laughs> philosophical, that really is happening in just the way things are going on. It's almost like the philosophies are gone. They may be there in theory somewhere from ancient, or, or but anyway, so it's about to exercise our intelligence I think we need to use, to think about the difference between believing and thinking. Because we spend too much of our time believing and not enough of it thinking. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, to, to, uh, see there are certain concepts that I think we just, to exercise our intelligence, there are certain concepts I think it's time that we really kind of go over and look at. And one of them, the, the difference between thinking and believing. See, I think that that's maybe one of the most important ones because everything's about energy. And when we think, we project electromagnetic energy through thought. Everything is about energy, and energy is supposed to flow. So when we're thinking, all right, we're more in balance because our energy is flowing. But when we're believing, see, then we're not. Our energy isn't necessarily flowing because that energy of belief, well, all believing is 
is limited by the perceptions of the believe. See, so thinking, when we're exercising our intelligence, thinking and letting that energy flow, thinking, thinking to recognize and see. Or when we're using it to believe, we're putting it in this box of believe because all beliefs have their prejudices and their biases and mm -hmm. their limitations. So we're taking that energy and we're putting it in this box and it's got not going anywhere. It's just making us be out of balance, kind of stressed out, out of balance. You know, and, and, and I think that we really need... So exercising our intelligence is maybe we're in a situation we're in individually within our lives collectively as a society, generationally as a generation, is because we're not, use, we're not thinking enough. We're not using the power and the int and energy of our intelligence mm -hmm. in a thinking capacity. So we're not really generating this energy, this energetic level we need individually or collectively. See, it's all being fed into believing the way we were programmed to believe. See, so to me, I don't know how that answers your question, but about exercising mm -hmm. our intelligence. See, and then there are many, you know, many things to the different thinking, believing. It, it's about uh, another one I think is that really needs to be th th thinking or thought needs to be put into is the difference between recognizement, recognizing reality, recognition and judgment. I'll say it like that. The difference between recognition and judgment. I think we should be using the power of our intelligence to think and recognize recognize reality. All right? Or the parallel thing is to use the power of our intelligence to believe and judge reality. These parallel things. See, mm -hmm. so thinking is about recognition and about recognizing reality ourselves, but it's about that. Believing is about judgment. See, and believing in judgment, the, see, again, energy is supposed to flow. So thinking and recognizing the energy of thought flows. Believing and judging, see, well, judgment is its own box, limited. So we take, so you take the energy of thinking and you put it in thinking to recognize or the energy of our intelligence put into believing and judging <laughs> thinking mm -hmm. and recognizing, I, we have a, ch a better chance of creating solutions, finding, being mm -hmm. able to see and generate the energy that's needed to make real changes. Believing, it, but if most of our perception of reality is based around believing and judging, then all we're doing is we're just creating these, keeping ourselves distorted because we're not coming up with any solutions to our lives. This is either individually, uh, collectively or generationally see and, and I think that that's a part of the problem that we're confronted with is it's it's all about energy and anyway well we mm -hmm. well, the energy okay <laughs> well, I think from what you're saying I gather is you know that's why they say think outside the box not believe outside the box because beliefs belief puts you within systems whereas thinking you're 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 moving beyond what the systems that already you've been in our in our uh, age, trained to, to train to believe. That's quite well, I just, all I know is it's all about energy, and the power power of the people, and power to the people, and all this and that. It's not about voting or money or any of that. Power of the people and power to the people is about the kind of energy we can generate by using our individual intelligence clearly and coherently. See, that's power. That's, that's the reality and dynamic of real and natural power. All right, is the inner electromagnetic thought. We project it. So the power, clear, coherent use of our intelligence, our thinking intelligence, it creates this energy. It, it becomes a part of a larger, larger living energy. They've been using technology and brainwashing and all these things to sedate that intelligence, the power of that intelligence, and shape-shift it and mold it into these other systems so that they can contain it and control it. So, so it's, everything's about energy and what's the problem that's not, the problem that we're confronted with Collectively, as a society, see the energy's there, but it's being sedated in such a w in a certain way. And this is why I'm saying we need to think more, because if we think more, somehow, some kind of a way, we will create this spark, this energy that will help it to become. Because all the stuff that's going on in the end is, you know, the, the only power we have, the only power we have is our intelligence, and it is. 
as, as human beings, all the rest of it is, is, is access and means to get authority and the, one of the illusions of power. The money, all that other stuff, that's about authority. The only, real, the only power we really have as human beings is our intelligence. And how, and how see, and one of these, this, 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 this difference between believing and thinking, see, one of the things about that is, see, is because people that go along around in their lives and they're all tore up and, rep, you know, they're all tore up inside their hearts, their heads, their minds, beating themselves up because of traumas, guilt, and all this and that, all right? Well, they're using the power of their creative intelligence, this energy, in this kind of a way. See, and all of that is based upon how they believe about themselves. It's got absolutely nothing to do with thinking. It's about how they believe. See, so, so when you look at it in that context, well, look at all this energy and how it's being used against itself. So, so when I look at the distinction between about belief, see, this is all, whatever's going on, is, I guarantee you it's about energy. Our energy is being mined and consumed through how we're indoctrinated to perceive reality. It's about energy, and see, but we have this intelligence, we have this ability to, to shut it down, to shut them down. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, you're making sense, and I'm, <laughs> sh I'm sure the viewers would, would agree. And you know, <laughs> you've, 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 you've kind of touched on a few of the themes that I wanted to talk about, and technology is one of them. It seems to me that uh, technology doesn't necessarily have to put us in that box, but it seems like, especially with the media, that, that it is being utilized in order to, and to keep people from thinking rather than to spur them into thinking. And it, it's something I've thought about off and on for some time now is... Uh, it's programming. Mm -hmm. Turn on the TV. What is it? Programs. Yeah, <laughs> they tell program. you right there. They're, they're not even lying. They never <laughs> lied from the beginning about that part. Right? They called it program. Mm -hmm. It's programming. That's right. That's what it is. And but, I, you know, before they had TV, they used radio for programming. Before that, they used newspapers. Before that, and they've always used the church. They've always used patriotisms. Programming. It's programming. Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, that programming takes place so that they can take the, the energy or the power of our intelligence, see, and they can shape it to meet their program rather than allow it, allow us to use it to meet ours. <laughs> And our program mm -hmm. being, our, however our Creator put us here, then we were biologically put here, all right, to live a life. All right? See, but when we get here, then the, the, the miners, <laughs> the, the, the energy consumers, see, they come in here and they put us into this program when we're born, it, right? And, and, anyway, yeah. And the education con conducts us along that same route. Well, no, it's, it's all programming, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all programming, and it struck me while you were talking that, yeah, we go back, the church did the programming, and uh, and you've always of, often said that, you know, that you are the old Indians and that we are the new Indians, that we all came from tribes, but you go back to them tribal days, and it seems to me that the the uh, the uh, tribal members sat around the fire and they listened to the stories, and they're more or less being programmed into the, into that that. Uh, way of thinking. Now, I perceive that as being different, but how, how, how is that different than the way we're, we're, pro being, we're programming our, our, uh, our youth now? If you follow why, I may not make that clear, I don't know. But you well, no. Or is that the same thing in your mind? No, I don't think it is the same thing. All right. Because I think back when we still had our senses, it wasn't about programming, it was about teaching to keep the balance. See, today, the programming is about to dis upset and disrupt the balance. See, that? that's the difference. I can see what you mean. Sure, that, that there is that difference there, because it seems that to... That is the difference. That man. is the difference, because <laughs> they tell those stories, the, the children or whoever that are listening to those stories, they are... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they have to supply the imagery and everything for it. Whereas whereas now the images are just fed to us via these 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 TVs and 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 uh, there is there is there isn't a connection between between the two. That's what you, that might be what you mean by no, that teaching. Isn't what, no, 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 <laughs> no. I didn't even think of that image. Just back then in that time, when they told the stories, they were communicating the knowledge of the of the people, of the human beings. Okay. They all were right. communicating sure. the ancestral knowledge through these stories. All right, so this was teaching because this, this knowledge was being communicated to help maintain and keep the balance because it was about respect. So that was teaching, that wasn't programming. What, once, 
at some point programming became a part of the civilizing process. The programming is to imprint so that they can keep, they can disrupt the balance. See, they program human beings and after a human being has become programmed, they no longer have any, are in balance. When a human being has been taught, they have balance. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes sense. You know, I've often thought that uh, you know, we, I, we also, some of us also produce a program, Native Nations, out there at, at, at the uh, other facility, and, and we talk about Native issues. Well, I don't talk about them, but we, we provide that forum for, for Native people to speak. And I, I've noticed for some time now that even though Natives, you know, maybe in, in other parts of the world as well, they are, they don't think of I so much as they think of the tribe first. And you would think that that would be a lot less of an individuality with people like that. But it seems to me that Native peoples, even though the tribe is the most important thing to them, they are more of an individual. And, and, and uh, maybe that's because of the, what you're talking about, the stories and the teachings that go on. And it's probably why the languages was tried to be destroyed, and you know their, their, well, the their lives were, were destroyed. Well, I mean, on part of that, but languages, the destruction of the languages has got to do. It's all about energy. I'm telling you. <laughs> all right, it is. It's mm -hmm. it, we anyway. The destruction of the languages is about because we project electromagnetic thought, energy in a vibratory reality. All right. Well, the la so when we think, we're thinking at a certain frequency, let's call it. And when we, and when we speak, we're, 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 we're putting sound out into a vibratory reality at a certain frequency, so to speak, all right? A certain vibration. So when you destroy the language that a people are in harmony with, this, is, this language goes with their thinking. These go, see, these, these vibrate in synchronicity, so to speak. They're in tune. So, but when you take that language, all right, and then you destroy that language and you replace it with another language, see, now it's a different tuning pitch. So, see, everything's about energy. See, mm -hmm. it's about the balance. Am I making sense? Sure. All right, see, so that, so, I mean, so whatever the terminology is in a civilizing process about they do this or whatever, but in the end, it's about energy. I'm telling you, it's about, all right, how it's a part of that mining process because it's all about keeping the individual human being out of balance, out of synchronicity with themselves. Mm -hmm. Because then they will go into these emotional distorts and we will do any kind of nutty thing. Rational, ra <laughs> rationalize, justify it, or any other mm -hmm. thing, right, when we're in our emotional distorts. Mm -hmm. And we do it so much that it starts to look normal. That's exactly what's been, it seems like it happens if you watch any kind of news. It seems like the most <laughs> abnormal things <laughs> now are the news. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. Look around our communities. Look around our city. We don't even have to watch the news. Mm -hmm. Looking at people, you know, yeah, you know. You know, because a lot of people wearing masks nowadays, you know? I mean, it's just, you know, mm -hmm. don't, don't want anybody to see what, yeah, so mm -hmm. it's, yeah, see, it's pervasive, I'm telling you. <laughs> you know, you do mention mining a lot, and uh, it occurs to me that we are, you know, we are, we, for what you're saying, we are being mined, and, uh, but we are actually, in a lot of ways, we are doing the mining ourselves, it seems like. Well, we're being mined, you know? Yeah, I, well, that's the way it works. You know, I, 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 since I have, I have uh, listened to a few of your talks over the years, I, I have a really good idea of what that means. But you know, I think someone who's tuning in right now and said, "Mining, mining this, what does what does that mean?" I, I don't, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to really explain what you mean. But since you're right here, maybe you can. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what it means. All right, now well, think about it. You know it. what it means. But being able to articulate it, you know, on the spot sometimes yeah, but, is a difficult. Yeah, thing but to I, do. hold on. I, well, it, it's it's not a short answer, you know. And, mm -hmm. uh, um, but do you have still have the program that where I did say what? Oh, it I means? would imagine. In fact, I have one well, in there right air now. It. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't run it. Well, we run it then, and I people and people can do that, that right now because. Mining, all right, basically, <laughs> My, mining, as human beings, we are units of energy. Our being is our energy. When, when we no longer have being, the human just laid down goes back to the earth. So the energy, spirit, but it's in our being. 
All right. And all things of the earth have being because all things of the earth have an energy, whether it's a stone or a tree, all things of the earth have energy, right? Because you, right, you can mine stone and convert it, uranium, it's energy, and so all things have energy. And so what technologic civilization is based upon is it's a mining civilization. It eats energy. So it eats the energy of this planet, the energy of this earth, and we're aware of it through, through mining for gold or uranium or fossil fuel, but we're aware that this goes on. But what we're not understanding is, see, we're a part of the same entity, the same energy source. So it, we're being mined. The being part of human is being mined, all right, by the technologic civilization. The human part of, or the being part of human is being mined through how the human is imprinted to perceive reality. All right, and then the energy of being is now diverted into this self-destructive thing where it go, it's, we eat against ourselves because through our fears, doubts, insecurities, all that stuff that's been imprinted in there. See, I call this a mining process to take, to take the power of human intelligence used clearly and coherently, the energy that that generates to take that energy all right, and convert that energy into a form of energy that can be used to feed a different system through the fears, doubts, and insecurities. So we're imprinted to perceive reality from a negative perspective. We're overloaded with negatives, so to speak. But anyway, I think, so civil, Western civilization, or technologic civilization, all right, its job, what it does is it mines the energy of the human being by mining the being part of human through how it imprints or programs the human to perceive reality. And, and so, just like it's mining the dinosaurs or the trees, just like all this, see, our energy is a part is being consumed too. And, 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 and when you mine the uranium and all these other kinds of things, it leaves behind poison and toxic. Well, when you mine the being part of human, the poison and toxic, it leaves behind our fears, doubts, and insecurities. See, and now, and once these are in there, the human no longer perceives reality, no longer recognizes reality. Because the human only perceives reality through the different varying levels and intensities of their fears, doubts, and insecurities. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that, that ties in with what you were saying earlier about programming versus teaching because yeah. <laughs> since since we are being mined in this doubts fears and insecurities we don't know how to relate to one another we don't we don't gain knowledge from each other like we used to and, and that that breaks it up is that does that follow from what you're saying if it does to you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well I'd kind of like, like to know I'm on the same track that, well, that, that you were going down the road there but that brings up something I've thought about many times you know uh, we, we seem that everybody thinks that we are developed we are evolving civilization and all that and uh, it doesn't really seem to me that the, the human beings you know past the tribal level where they can relate with each other and relate to the earth are evolving and it seems to me that technology is really even though people think that is bringing us evolving, it seems to me it's holding us back. Well, it, well, evolution isn't a fast thing. So we're evolving, okay. all, right? all right? Now, whether we're evolving into our, our own extinction or we are evolving past that, but we're evolving. This isn't something that you're going to see. Evolution is about lifetimes. It isn't something that we're just going to see in our own last even hundred years, but we don't even live that long. But, but see, evolution is, now, the, techno the technology itself, in a technologic evolution, it's evolving way beyond our ability to mm -hmm. deal with it and handle it and understand it, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe the technology, right, is what's feeding off us. Our energy is being fed to the technology. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so maybe in some kind of bizarre way, the machines are raising us. Well, a lot of people, you know, you know Maybe the machines that. are raising us. Maybe mm -hmm. we're the cattle now, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you really think about it, because well, everything's being done to serve the God technology, and it is everything that we're doing, basically. 
you know, the good guys serve it, the bad guys serve it, you know, the good guys, they, they buy and consume it in excess. The, 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 the good guys, they got, they got a, a grudge against the bad guys because the bad guys don't do it right with their polluting and all their stuff, but yet the good guys go out here and they overconsume. You know, see, so everybody's serving the God technology. You know, it, it, that's what I'm saying about real thinking. Coherent thought has to be injected somewhere in here because mm -hmm. the good the good guys and the bad guys are both they're just riding in different parts of the same train. And and really the biggest difference is over who's gonna drive the train. All right. I mean really in a way because you you I mean you look at and especially in an industrial commercialized world, see the good guys are consuming stuff they just don't need. But that's what's helping to fuel this thing. You know, you <laughs> see, so it's, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, we're talking about, what you know, I'm saying about energy, something has to be in, injected energetically to change them because the good guys and the bad guys really, you know, some are nice, the good guys are maybe, if you're one of the good guys and are on their side, then the good guys are nicer than the bad guys. If you're one of the bad guys and the bad guys, and on their side, mm -hmm. then the bad guys are nicer. But see, it's, but when I look at it, see, they're both, yeah, it's everybody's consuming more than they need. I mean, excessively. Extremely excessive, yeah, you know. and it's impossible not to unless you go off on a farm somewhere and, and you know, live your whole life on a commune. Or, or it's time to just say, mm -hmm. you know, time for the good guys. Everybody say, I got an addiction problem here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? you know, that's what, yeah, my name is such and such, and, uh, and I'm, I'm addicted, an addict. Like I'm, I'm addicted to material and fear, which makes me want to consume more material, and insecurity, which makes me want to consume more mm -hmm. material. I'm addicted to my own perception of powerlessness, which makes me want to consume. You know, maybe that should be the, the thing. Well, you know, like, like you've said before, you know, the major thing we need to do is not lie to ourselves. And that might be a step in the right direction, is just to, to admit that we are addicted to this. Well, <laughs> I wanna, all right, let's use the word, I don't know about admitting, because when I go to the movies, it's a, the ticket admission, the price of admission. Admission means let you in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? But maybe it's time to exit <laughs> instead of admit. <laughs> See, you know, okay, we admit a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe we should acknowledge. See, admit means to let it in. It doesn't mean to let it out. See, but we use admitting as a way of whatever. But I think maybe we should acknowledge. See, we, because if we acknowledge, then the, you look at the root of the words, act on the knowledge. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right? Admit means let it in and keep it in. So that, may, that may, so that may be a way of continuing to do what we admit. But if we acknowledge, <laughs> right, then maybe we, we would act on the knowledge and we would not continue to do what we've been admitting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. anyway. It's part of what you're talking about and recognize. Yeah. You know? There's a di that's right. See, they, make, they have different vibratory, they make different sounds in the vibratory wavelengths or whatever when we project sound into the, the ripple of sounds. They, they have two different, see, so maybe, yeah, so maybe some of the sounds or the words we use should be we should have a better understanding of them rather than just use them out of habit and convenience. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that the, uh, the the powers that be that do with the mining, they understand the power of these words, and you know they they use them in such a way that uh, that uh, it stops people from thinking and well, makes them they emotionally programmed react. them to us. They taught <laughs> them to us <laughs> the concepts, them. the words, mm -hmm. and all of that, mm -hmm. right? And I don't know. I wouldn't. I, I, I think more than the powers that be, I think we should call them the authoritarians. Because mm -hmm. that's what they are. They're the authoritarians. From the standpoint that the, uh, they, ha they have the power, but also that they are the author of the system that, that, uh, that we believe. Well, they, we see, well, but yeah, well, no, like they have the power. Well, it depends on how you define power, you know. I mean... I know that they have the they have the means and the ability, and and the capabilities of violence. But I don't know that that's that's one. It's one of the those may be elements of power. But see, I don't look at it, when I look at it like that. It's to me I know they have the br brutality, 
the capability and the brutality to maintain what they have. But I don't know that I, I would call it power. All right, because that, that's one of the things about authoritarianism, you know, and I, I think because when you look at it, if they have the technology to wreak havoc on us, then that's, or they have the economics to wreak havoc on us, or the military, or the political thing to wreak havoc on us, then to me, I look at those, these are things that are access to authority. I don't necessarily look at them as being power, per se. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, but these, but see, if they convince us that this is power, then see, this is all about designed about us not recognizing ourselves as human beings, all right, and our own power. See, so if I believe, if, believe again, see, don't, I'm not talking about thinking. If I believe that their that their ability to produce and generate violence makes them powerful, then I will never understand my own relationship to power because I'll always look at that as being, and I know that I don't have that. If I believe that I gotta get money to be powerful, see, then I'll never recognize myself because I'm externalizing what power really is. See, in those teachings you're talking about a long, long time ago, see, this is what was being passed, power is in here. Mm -hmm. see, but now, see, everybody, nobody, so, you know, so people talk, Go around and they talk about personal power, look for the personal power, but see, it all gets negated because everything is casually, we use these words, they have power over us, the powers that be, casually, frivolously, but not understanding every time we make the incantation, we're planting it. Mm -hmm. We're making it happen. <laughs> yeah. You know? and so we're not changing anything about the perception of how mm -hmm. we perceive, which is what they don't want us to do. But if you look at, break it down to pragmatic things, you know, on one level it is power. It's a mutation of power. It's not power in its own. It's like if you take uranium out and you convert the being of uranium, that, uran that energy, right, it, and, and they call it power. But what it is, it's a mutation of natural power, that, all right, that they control. See, but real power they can't control. Mm-hmm. From what you're saying, power, you, you use the word energy a lot, and I think power and energy are maybe the same thing. Yeah, more, they're, interchange, more so they're interchangeable. Than, yeah. It's like being, you know, so with being is like being spirit, being energy. Mm-hmm. They are synonymous terms. Not, spirit not, being energy. We are spirit being energy, all right? But if we don't recognize that... <laughs> See, then, yeah, what, which, mm -hmm. see, and, and going back to what, what, what was used to be teachings, not programming, see, we were taught about spirit being energy. That's what we used to be taught, see, but with programming, we're not taught that. Actually, it's quite the opposite. We're taught, well, with programming, we're taught that there's something wrong with us and we've got to listen to them. Yeah. <laughs> right. Guilt, sin, blame. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, from what we're talking about, these, these, these different, we're talking about two parallel things, and, and a lot of times people... Are Reality and the illusion. People are mistaken one for the other, right? Reality the, and the mm -hmm. illusion, yeah, the parallels. And uh, I think one of the main parallels that I get out of, uh, well, some of, the, some of the reading I've done in the past, and, and also that you talk about, is, is, is this, uh, not parallel, but this, this argument between spirituality and religion. Where religion, you know, dominates the world. It's so much in the, in the news lately with this imam uh, wanting to build the, the, uh, the thing at the, the mosque, the, the mosque and, and all the different things that are going on, you know, religion is, is, is taboo, but you don't think about, you don't see much about actual spiritual values. <laughs> religion is not about spiritual values, it's about religious values. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, well, it is. <laughs> so uh, from what you're talking about, we are energy that is more in the line of spirit. Whereas religion seems to be in the line of technology and mining people. Well, that is that is how I, I approach that polarity. I, I don't know if you know. I was interested in your thoughts on well, that I subject. Well, I think people just need you know. I just think people need to think about all of it because, well, uh, spirituality is about. 
us individually being responsible for our participation in reality and about maintaining a balance. To me, that's what it is, it, responsibility. It's about us. We're responsible for whatever waves we make. And religion tells us that in order to be responsible, we have to submit to their authoritarianism because there was something wrong with us for being born. Mm -hmm. See, so spirituality is about life is a gift and we're, we have a responsibility to live that gift. That's what spirituality, recognize and live that gift. That's what spirituality is about. Religion is about life in a way is almost like a sin because there's some, we are born with original sin. There's something wrong with us. So religion has basically got this way of saying life is a sin and therefore we owe God obedience. And in order to show that obedience that we owe to God, we got to listen to their male dominated mm -hmm. chain of command. So which when you look at it, and they call that being responsible, but I call that being that's spiritually irresponsible because we're now giving over our responsibility to them because we're, we're, we, we're guilty of sin for being born. Well, Right, mm -hmm. you know, so, so religion is really, and religion is about mining. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, they're all like this, but I'm going to use the Catholic Church as an example. Yeah, because they were the only church around at the time. I, I spent right. 11 years in Catholic school, yeah, yeah, so well, I, yeah, but, I don't know what you're saying here. Yeah, but, yeah, <laughs> well, but the, the Catholic Church, that when they were still the only church around, that, that's when they started the Inquisitions. Right, I think they were still the only church around when the Inquisition started. Yeah, they were. All right, and and when they started the Inquisitions, it was basically the Inquisitions from the church's perspective were about the religious justification was to possess the souls of the godless pagans, to possess their souls. That's what it was about. I mean, actually, it trans into land and dollars and authority and mm -hmm. shit like that. There are things like that, right? But it was about, but, but that was, the, they went after so-called, like, the, the mineral rights, <laughs> the individuals, because mm -hmm. the king and the landlords already owned, right, mm -hmm. the surface rights. <laughs> it was a gig of that. But, but anyway, religion is part of the mining process. Well, that certainly would stand to reason if you were to think about the the uh, old world coming to the new world, and that is how the mining process was took in, taking place in a lot of ways, was through the proselytization of the Catholic Church. And they pretty much, you know, they had to, the first they went after the, to convert the, well, the what they called the pagans, to, to the church. Well, the Catholic Church, I mean, dealing with Christianity, yeah, the Catholic Church were the most blatant about it, but they'd been around longer. Mm -hmm. You know, but when you but once the church started dividing it up and they took their other identities and stuff, they still basically. Were, some of them may have behaved. They all did wrong, <laughs> every one of them. All right, <laughs> when right. you come down to it, when you look at just, if you're going to talk about following the loving God's teachings, they all misbehaved. Mm -hmm. Whether they were Protestants, Presbyterians, in the end, before it was all done, and I say it as a native person because they came and they took land, all right, and they rationalized, accepted or whatever, the extermination of a people. See, so, so maybe the people have their horror stories about the Catholics. The, the only thing about the horror stories of the Catholics is it just goes back further in history. You know, because they've been around now since 1200 or 1100 or whenever Constantinople or whoever it was made, the, went from the Roman Empire to the Holy Roman Empire, yeah, right? The, 400 AD or something. Yeah, sometime like that. Like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, you know, so, and then, and then the other churches, you know, took another seven, eight hundred years before other churches started to appear. See, so when you look at that, see, all the Western governments, everything, see, they're all, everything had to get through that portal that was the Catholic Church at that time to exist today, whether mm -hmm. the, the, the religions, the governments, they all, at some point, had to be shaped by that, influenced by that. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to think, I can't remember, but I think it was mostly the Catholic Church that, that uh, was in charge of the, the, uh, 
westward expansion of, of the European peoples that who, who the, through the Spaniards and the Dutch and, and uh, the English who landed on, uh, on these northern and southern well, hemispheres. Well, uh, <laughs> who is it? Oh, there's the Catholics and then who broke off from them? The Protestants? The Protestants. Protestants were pretty active up here mm, in the they north. Were. Yeah, mm. you know, they were actually, uh, there were more Catholics, so obviously they would be more active in some mm -hmm. ways. Protestants hadn't been around that long yet by the time they got here. They'd been around, what, a couple hundred years, but you got another, you got a thousand years worth of Catholic, right, indoctrination going on. So by the time they got here, I'd say that the Prot or whoever the non-Catholics were, the Angles that came out of, mm -hmm. they did, they held their own with the Catholics. There just weren't as many of mm -hmm. them. But, you know, whether you, whether you call them Catholics or Protestants, I mean, it seems like it, it, their effect upon the native people was the same. Well, what, yeah, well, but the deal, well, I don't want to get sidetracked in that. What, their, their effect against the, all the natural world. All right. Yeah. All right, it's just the same. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and it being, <coughs> it isn't about <coughs> trashing religion. <coughs> <coughs> Because it's their karma, so I got. I'm not gonna go there, but religion has its own karma too. So this isn't about trashing it. This is really about not about Catholics and Protestants. It's about Western re technologic civilized religion not following a spiritual reality. That's what right. this is really that's about. We're, that's no, what no, we're no, talking no, about. No, right. Have a name calling contest with some well, individual we, we denominations. Into, we got off into a little hist history <coughs> thing, then, but but yeah, like but, like but, you're saying, what we were talking about was was with the idea of, of, of spiritual. Yeah, I guess that's what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I didn't know if we were going to be doing the whole program because John is going to have to be going next door here for the uh, for the cannabis common sense show, which comes on at ten o'clock or. Uh, eight o'clock on channel 11 just following us and so uh we've got about five minutes left you need a little bit of break there before you get on to the next next program yep. there it's all uh, right i think i really appreciate you coming on the program no problem i had a million other things we could have talked about and maybe you know you're seeming to come up here every year uh hopefully you'll be back next year and your band will be up here doing you know doing this this hemp stock as well and maybe we can sit down and Maybe talk for half an hour. Well, if I'm, yeah, if I'm here, <laughs> if I'm here, we'll talk. Right? I always appreciate yeah. you coming on, yeah. and uh, you don't mind us getting up on uh, YouTube, and so people can can tune in on what you have well, to say yeah, here. Yeah. If I agree to sit down and do it, then use it. Then use it. That's pretty much, I think. Why I'm sitting here. Why you're sitting here? That's right. Well, no, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, if you can use it here once, then why not? Why not again? Yeah. You know what? Uh, so we're down to about four minutes, and uh, you could probably just go ahead and uh, un unplug your microphone if you'd like, and then and go get a drink of water and and prepare for the next show. Here, I sure appreciate you coming on. It's always it's always illuminating to uh, to talk to you and, and to listen to what you have to say. We'll talk again. We'll talk right. again. Thanks, I, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Thank you, John. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I figured John could use a break. We've been burning a lot of uh, brain cells here, <laughs> talking about a lot of things. And uh, to me, it's, it's, it's really important to get different perspectives. Once I get my mic turned in here anyway. And uh, John's got a unique perspective. And uh, it's important for people to get out there and, and uh, find out different things. Like, you know, a lot of the points that he made tonight are points that he makes on a lot of his talks. Then he comes to town, his spoken word, as they call it. Uh, not so much in his music, although his music, you know, some of his songs, you know, like um, Crazy Horse, you know, we hear what you say. He's talking about this relationship between us and the earth. And uh, that's something we're not going to hear about on, 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 our, on our media. We didn't get a chance to talk about media much. But that's part of the technological world that, he, that, that John speaks about. And um, it's something that uh, you and me are going to have to learn to deal with because this technology, to me, uh, and to a lot of people, uh, when, when uh, our children are... are uh, can be sitting almost next to each other and texting one another when you know we spend our lives in the box of our cars or in the box of our computers or now in the box of our of our uh, uh, cell phones. Uh, 
what he talks about is, is something that, uh, you know, whether you necessarily agree with all the aspects of, of what John and a lot of other people talk about too, Derek Jensen, a lot of other folks, there is this, this uh, dichotomy, this polarity of how we're living our lives and, and the, the connection that we have given up to the earth and to each other in a lot of ways. Uh, and, and that, it, to me, is epitomized by our, our technological distance from one another with these little tools that we have. And, yes, yeah, sure, uh, you know, they, they do help out. They do make life easier for us. But there's questions we have to ask ourselves. We have to recognize, to use John's terminology, that uh, uh, are we giving up as much as we're getting or are we giving up more than we're giving? Uh, we are more secure, possibly, but are we? You know, we are more comfortable, but are we? Wouldn't we have more comfort if we were in a society where we could walk down the street and then be uh, free with the people that we're with? We didn't have to lock our doors when we left uh, and, and be afraid that someone might break in and steal them. So I appreciate folks tuning in. Wish we could open up the phones, but uh, we just ran out of time. John's an enthralling speaker, and we just ran out of time. And, and uh, uh, perhaps we can, we can uh, do this another time when he comes back next year. But I'll just remind folks, Hempstock is tomorrow, Saturday, at Kelly Point. I don't know if we have a graphic for it, but folks can go on hempstock.org and click on the link. Go to the to the, uh, the link that will bring you to the map and how to get out to Kelly Point, the confluence of the, of the uh, Columbia River and the uh, Willamette River. Uh, it's out near Solvay's Island, I believe. Wonderful place. It's going to be a nice day, good music. A native reggae group is going to be playing, uh, Jim Page. And I think we're just about running out of time. So thanks, folks, for tuning in. We'll see you next week. With machines for ancestors. New unborn generations. Chemical umbilical cords are only wiring. In your electrical progress, human lives burnt offerings to the god greed. With lies for ancestors.